We've been on the plane now. We've gone on 13 hours, 13 hours on an airplane. And with all this energy and all this great vibe and all this good feeling, I'm almost high off of just listening to the great music. Lloyd Price never got high in his life. Never, ever. But I tell you, <laughs> I promise you the spiritual commitment, the rhythm, and the beat, and we're going to Ken Chasa for Zaire 74. That's what's happening. <laughs> People were waiting at the airport for six hours. There were about 300,000 people. 300,000 people at the airport. It feels like there's 300,000 people in this plane. Yeah. I think I think that this is just fantastic. Hey, let me hear some more music. After seeing this film, I actually wanted to call the police and bring them in here with me and arrest you for holding on to all this great footage over all these years. How many more films do you have out of that Zaire? Exactly. Foot, that, that I don't know. It really, I think it's really, there's still about 120 hours that are completely untouched. So, you know, probably you can go in there. I'm not going to say you can make another 100 movies, but another couple if one wanted to. And what I really want to do is make kind of the complete concert. Right. It's as complete as, I'm, as the material would allow. And you'd really get a sense of the, of the majesty and the, and the depth of, 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 um, of what's there. And in some ways, the film is like a calling card to that right. um, next project. Certainly that could be happening today, but, you know, sadly, I think that the value of sort of um, that kind of true sort of cultural interchange and that going back to the roots, which is very important to the organizers, that just has kind of diminished over time, um, unfortunately. Hey, do it fine. I want to teach you that little routine, huh? Root a better man to me. I read in the production notes that 
you had a, sc a first screen under this and it didn't go too well, but you was able to take that criticism and remold the picture. Yeah. Where do you think the picture was going at first at that point? Like what, what, what changes did you make to make this so power like the great picture that it is now? Um, yeah, you know, whenever I produce a film or now direct it, I have um, some type of you know, small focus group screening just to see how people are perceiving it. Um, the, you know, in the first screening, I had some pretty strong criticism regarding um, the amount of logistics that I had put into it. It was still the same movie, you know, it still had basically the same structure, but maybe there was 20 minutes more logistics and, you know, 10 minutes less music, you know, right. so it was really finding a different balance. And the important for me is that it actually helps me better achieve the film that I want to make, because ultimately I want to make a film that's reaching the audience. Right, you right. Know, and I need the audience to tell me, um, to, to, to have that feedback. And certainly, um, I even in that screening, people love the film. And now, even now, at the end of it, not everybody loves the film. So you're, you're always dealing with different people's tastes. But at least for me, it's now the film I wanted to make, which is the most I can, I can do. <laughs> Got lipstick on the hands. Good thing I ain't married. <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the moment. No, <laughs> oh, don't rush it, man. <laughs> let me, let You're me taking a nice long break. See, you yeah, got that. And I tell you what, as far as I'm concerned, the break ain't over. It's still in a mission. <laughs> yourself on the fact that you're able to take that criticism and build from it where other people might have you know walked away from a project well I certainly feel that it's incredibly important to be able to take in criticism or critical comments and to make the best out of them because the other people of the screen that love the film I didn't really get anything from that right it felt right. good right but it didn't show me any direction for how to move with it right so I think it's essential for filmmakers to do it and as a producer, I'm, I've always trusted. So I felt if as a director I ignored it, it would just, I'd be a hypocrite. I didn't, <laughs> right. didn't want to be that, so. This man will make your bladder splatter. This man will freeze your knees. If you will, let's all welcome the world's godfather of soul, soul brother number one, James Brown. 